In this next video segment, we're going to take a look at creating a buffet cabinet. And off to the right, I have a photo of the inspiration of the buffet cabinet. And on the left, I have the completed cabinet that I've gone through in Chief Architect and created. So in this video, I'm going to show you the steps that I've used to create that specialty cabinet, including the trapezoid-shaped legs and also the custom-shaped doors that are on that cabinet. Let's go ahead and get started in the program. I'm going to begin by placing a base cabinet in the plan. And once that's placed, I'm going to resize that to about 48 inches and then open up the dialog box by double clicking on the cabinet. I'm going to make a few changes in here. The sizing of the cabinet, I'm going to set the height of that to be 27 inches and then I'll set the depth of it to be 15 inches. And then for the countertop, I'm going to set that to be 1 inch in thickness, set the overhang to be 0, flat sides, flat back, for the corner treatment, I'm going to make that none because that's going to be a custom countertop eventually. Toe kick, I'm going to remove that. And then on the box construction, I'm going to set this to be framed. And then at least initially, I'm going to do inset doors. Then for the cabinet face items, let's click on that drawer, use the delete key. And then on this face item here, I'm going to change the face item from an auto right door to the double door. Now that that's a double door, I'm now going to split vertically that face item. So I now have two equal face items. And now as a final step in the dialog underneath the label, I'm going to give it a name of buffet and close the dialog. Well that completes the customization to the box. Let's go into the plan view and create an elevation so we can draw the legs. I'm just going to use the elevation camera and drag right through to create that elevation view. Now to create this trapezoid shaped leg, I'm going to use the polyline solid tool, start at the bottom of the box, and I'm going to draw up and over. While I'm doing that, press the tab key, and I'm going to enter in 2 inches by 36 inches. That way I don't have to resize it once I'm finished. Select the object, and let's set the thickness of it to be 15. And I'll go over to the plan view, and I'm going to center that on the cabinet box, select the object, use the center key, pick up the center of the box and then go back into the elevation view and I'm going to create a copy of it. If you notice the original leg, there's a lower foot and the upper leg and where they meet the trapezoid shape stops and starts. To accomplish that, select the item, use the copy in place and I'm going to slide this up three and a half inches. Again, use the tab key, change this back to polar, put in 3.5 inches and then I'm going to grab the other component of it and we'll just slide that down and intersect the two. On the upper portion of the leg, I'm going to grab the move handle and I'm going to pull that over four inches. Press the tab key as I'm doing that, type in four inches. That sets the top of that leg to be six inches and the bottom of it to be two inches. I'm going to use a material eyedropper and I'm going to pick up the colors off of my completed cabinet components and apply that. Just to save a little bit of time, you can browse into the library, find these colors that you like. And let's go ahead and grab that off the cabinet box. Make sure we're in object mode and apply it onto the cabinet box. Now to have those colors in place, I'm going to select the two leg components. Use the copy and then reflect about. Come over here, find the center of the cabinet. Now that that leg's in place, let's take our cabinet here and slide it up. Again, I could have used the tab key as I was sliding it up. Let's go back into the cabinet dialog. There is a setting for floor to bottom. I'm going to type in six inches here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take and create a countertop. You'll notice that the countertop on the completed cabinet is slightly below the legs. In this case, I'm going to take and create a countertop right at the top of that. And what I could do is in my plan view, draw a custom countertop and set the height. But with the cabinet selected, there's a tool that will make it shorter called Generate Custom Countertop. I'm going to select that. That's going to disconnect and create a copy for a countertop. If you open that up, there is a set thickness from the countertop, so if you want to change that thickness, I'm going to leave it at 1. But I'm going to remove set height from countertop, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and let go. I'll notice that the countertop remained on the cabinet, and that's because once I've moved the, cab the countertop off of there, it regenerates a new one. If you want it removed, you can open up the cabinet and just simply remove it. In this case, I'm going to leave that countertop on there, but I am going to use a material eyedropper. And I'm going to make it the box color of the cabinet. 
In the 3D view, what I want to do next is create the crackle glass, and I could use the material eyedropper and pull it off of this cabinet. You can also just simply search for the type of material you're after. There's a library out there of specialty glass. I'm going to apply that. And then finally, you'll notice that the cabinet box material for the countertop is going the wrong way. I'm going to use a tool called Adjust Material Definition, figure out what that is. Just go to the front of this here, and it's Cherry One painted. Let's use our material painter. You can see it here in the library, and what I want to do is create a copy of that, and I want a copy that is rotated 90 degrees. In this copy, I'm going to enter in 90 degrees and allow me to paint that material at 90 degrees. Now before I paint it, I'm going to use the scoping tool in the lower left hand menu just for the component and just apply that to the top of the box. Otherwise it's going to change the material direction for the rest of the components, the doors and the box. Materials in Chief Architect are typically intelligent and they'll follow the grain and direction for those components. One more cosmetic change to the buffet cabinet. I want to change the hardware doorknobs. I'm going to browse into the library for the door handle, find a different knob. I'm using the bonus catalog. You can go into the 3D library from our website and find those. I'm going to use a square, maybe I'll choose this cubic knob, apply that, and then use a material painter to pick up the material off of the countertop and apply that onto those knobs. Now that completes the first component of the cabinet. You'll notice that in my completed cabinet here, I've created a custom door style for this, and my door actually has an inset glass that is a trapezoid shape. In the next component of the video, I'm going to show you how to create that custom door. I'm going to create this custom door. To begin with, I'm going to use the Polyline Solid tool, and I'm just going to come off to the side of the cabinet over here, and I'm going to drag this out. Again, press the Tab key, and I'm going to set the dimensions. That way I don't have to do it later. So I'm going to set it to be 20 by 32. The default of that is one inch thick. The next step is I'm going to create a copy of this and I'm going to concentrically resize it. In your preferences, your defaults can be set. And I'm going to change that to be concentric. And then the jump size, in this case, I've set it to be three inches. So if I select this item, use the copy in place, then when I slide that in, it will jump exactly three inches. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that polyline solid that we just created a copy of and I'm going to make it a hole and that will punch a hole right through the middle of it. I want to resize the bottom of it to come in and create the trapezoid shape. Before I do that, I'm going to go back into the preferences and I'm going to change my edit behavior back to default so it's easy to move that. I'm going to come in here, select that. I'm going to pull this in two inches. Again, I'm going to press the tab key as I'm doing that. I'm just going to enter in two inches, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. Just come over here, press the tab key, and enter in two inches. Now with the trapezoid hole cut out into the main body of the door, I also want to put a glass pane in here. With the hole still selected, I'm going to use the copy in place that you'll find in the lower left hand menu, and then open that back up, remove it as being a hole, and here's where you can set the thickness of it. For your glass, let's put in an eighth of an inch. And we'll go back into the plan view and make the necessary corrections to this. In the plan view, I'm going to select glass pane. I'm going to use the center tool and I'm going to come in and center it on the door. And then back in the 3D view, I'm going to apply the materials. So in this case, I'm going to pick up the glass off of the countertop. Make sure I'm in component mode. Apply that. And then I'm going to apply the box color that I have and apply it to the door. Now one small detail that I'll point out is you notice the wood grain across the top rail and bottom rail is going the other way. If you want the details of that to go horizontally, you'll need to draw that as a separate slab, which is what I did. So I drew four slabs for this door and I did it in the elevation view, just simply retracing that. So if you want the wood grain to be very precise, that's the method for doing it. Now once I have this door completed, I'm going to go back in here, I'm going to copy this door, just draw a marquee around it, create a copy of it, I'm going to open up a new plan, and I'm going to paste that into the new plan, take a 3D view of it. And the reason I did this is you need to have the component that you want to export out as a symbol. So I'm going to come in here, go out to symbol, convert to a symbol, and let's change that into cabinet door and drawer. It needs to be the only thing in your plan, and let's give it a name. 
and then that way you can save it out, export it, it will go into your library and then when you place a cabinet you can then grab that door out of your library just like any other door and apply it onto the cabinet. And the nice thing about that is it will follow the parametric shape and resize that door accordingly. Let's go back into our original plan and then I can grab that door, apply it onto the cabinet and let's close the library up and then you'll notice that through the shelf here it's a solid shelf. Let's use the remove surface tool temporarily. Click on the door so that we can get in there. Use the material eyedropper, pick up that glass and apply it onto the shelf and we've pretty much completed the process. And those steps finish up creating a custom buffet cabinet using Chief Architect software. Thanks for watching.